seen refuses from its remnants. Crooked woodwork grown full of knots. He takes and carves to occupy his spare time. This wood he models with listless skill and patterns it after the image of a man or makes it resemble some worthless beast. When he has dabbed it with red crimson and its surface with red stain, he makes a fitting shrine for it and he hangs it on the wall and he fastens it with a nail. Unless it falls down, he provides for it, knowing that it cannot help itself. For truly, it is an image that needs help. This is the pagan idolatrous practice and veneration of false god worship. This is the pagan Euro-Gentile image of Jesus Christos hanging on the wall, whether it's on the crucifix form or whether you're hanging it with the picture and image of somebody that not only does not look like you, but biblically and unscripturally doesn't fit the chapters in the verses that say the Messiah would come and look like. Not you. Untrue. These events and things were happening in Babylon, and we were forewarned about that. Before we even got here, we were told. Moses warned us. He said that Yah will scatter us into a land that we would not know, and there we would serve other gods, gods of wood, Jesus Christos hanging on a wooden stake, and gods of stone, the Kaaba, that people circumnavigate and throw rocks at the devil while they're circumnavigating the cube that fell allegedly out the sky. Giving worship, as Nathaniel said, worship which is sacred, which Nathaniel said, worship which represents love by bowing down to a stick, an idol, an image, bowing down to a stone, a statue, which is lifeless, lifeless, instead of bowing in praise and worship to the true and the living Yah that has no image or form except he dwell as a spirit in all the sons and daughters of Israel that are righteous and good and just. None of you have seen Yah at any time, for the only begotten Son that is in the bosom of the Father has declared him. His word that he speaks to you is life, and when you walk in the light of that word, you then emulate and replicate the very being of the Messiah, which is the word, then you and the world can see Yah act through your righteous execution of the very law. You read, quote, speak to people, then you need to be a walking demonstration of the word. Where is your garment, white, clean, of fine linen, which is the righteous acts of the saints, not the words, but the actions of the saints. What are these righteous and just things he's talking about? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are these righteous things he's talking about in a time when we need to be preparing to move to a whole nother level of existence and understanding? What are these things? What is going on with the hem of your garment? What's so important about it? Why am I talking about wearing holy garments, set apart garments? Ezekiel chapter 5. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 5. What is the hem of your garment? You know, those sisters who are on the line, maybe there's a few tailors on the line, understand about clothes and garments. They know that when you get down, making a piece, and you get to the hem of the garment, and you fray it, that's a remnant. You fray it, that's a remnant. What's in the hem of the garment? What is the significance of all this that we've been talking about all day? Yeah, that's a long class, brother. What have y'all been talking about? Ezekiel gives us a little more insight into the hem of the garment. He was a priest. So put yourself in the mindset of him being a Kohen. Because that's what the lesson started out with when we were dealing with the righteous garments. Aaron and her own sons were members of the Kohanim. Yes, Kael, Ezekiel, according to the first chapter of Ezekiel, verse 3, is a priest. Look it up. 
In the fifth verse, or rather the fifth chapter, the first verse, 5 1 of Ezekiel says this And you, son of man, take a sharp sword, take it as a barber's razor, and pass it over your head and your beard. Now, anybody that knows this, according to Leviticus 21 5, you're not supposed to, if you're a priest, shave off all your hair and mar the edges of your beard. But he is instructed, son of man, Take your sword and pass it over your head and your beard and take scales and weigh and divide the hair. Hmm. And you shall burn it with fire, one-third in the midst of the city. When the days of the siege are finished, and you shall take one-third and strike it with the sword. And one-third you shall scatter to the four winds, and I will draw the sword after them. The hair metaphorically here refers to the children of Israel, and they are divided into one-third, one-third, one-third. And we know 33 percent and 33 and a third percent and 33 and a third percent equals up to nearly 100 percent. One-third will experience the siege of the invasion, one-third will die by the sword, and one-third will go into captivity. The hair represents the children of Israel. Something happens to a particular group of this hair. The Bible says this, verse 3, you shall also take a small number of them, meaning the hair, Israel, and bind them in the hem of your garment. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what that word said? It's a small part of Israel. If the hem of the garment represents the word of Yah, then the remnant would be bound up in the word of Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not just all of Israel, but the remnant is taught to be those who keep the commandments of Yah and have the testimony of Yahshua. Every Bible toting Tanakh Quoting Israelite is not a member of the remnant. Only those who keep the law and Alleluia. the testimony are members of the remnant. Stop Alleluia. giving Alleluia. everybody your inheritance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the remnant. If you have the commandments of Yah, you keep the testimony of Yahshua, you are a member of the remnant. Well, I'm, I'm Torah. I'm Torah only. Sorry, say, then you are out of the realm of salvation. Yes, I said it. That's biblically sound. You have no sacrifice. You have no testimony. And there can be no testimony without a test. Where's your test? And where is your sacrifice? Who's standing in the gap? What blood's been shed? You ain't killing no lamb, goat, ox, sheep. You lying to yourself in your wicked Babylonian scarred, stained, spotted garment. You are ineffective to deliver of people who are lost. Stand out, get out the way, and see the salvation of Yah this day. Hallelujah! 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 This people is in need of redemption, not some legalistic, law-twisting, sounding good, ineffective, misquote, and definitely misapplication of Scripture. Woo! Hallelujah! No, you got to understand that this, from the cover, from one book to the cover of the other book, is going to speak consistent and congruently. Hallelujah. What's tied up in the hem of the garment? The word. And if you have got the word tied up in the hem of your garment, and that word represents Yah, then you got it. Power. And if you are acting out of the righteousness of his word, which are the righteous acts of saints who wear fine linen, we're talking about his word, then you got power from on high. I ain't talking about no regular tangible clothes. You better be wearing some good clothes. Don't put no Armante on. Put you on a robe or a garment. Don't you put on no high heel shoes so your calves are all flexed up. Your hind parts are looking all tight and you drawing men by the sight of their eyes and the weakness of their flesh. Put on some flat shoes and cover your body and be a righteous, modest, trusting woman in Israel. Hallelujah! 
Hallelujah. Where is your garment at? Where is your garment? What is the garment that you're supposed to be wearing, that we're supposed to be wearing? Why is it so important? The book is very, very clear to us that you bind up the remnant in the hem of the garment. That's a prophetic utterance from a priest who was a pioneer in Israel that was in Babylon. These messages are coming straight to you out of your word from the very places of our captivity. He taught out of Babylon. We are teaching out of a modern-day mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and all the abominations of the planet Earth. And who in their right mind is know that they are, she is, we are in hell, who would want to stay in hell. That is not intelligent. Hallelujah. Why would you want to stay in Babylon knowing that you're in Babylon? you trying to keep on the Babylonian garment. Yes, I'm going to raise the consciousness and put some heat up under your backside, each and every one of you on this line who are quoting, who are saying, who are believing that destruction and judgment is coming. What are you doing to prepare on getting up out of here? Teach. The book of Yeremiah, as we close, just a few more minutes. I told y'all for being with me. We ran a little bit longer, but Torah, Jeremiah 58 and 10, it says this in the word of the Most High. It says, move out of the midst of Babylon and go out of the land of the Chaldeans and be like the he-goat before the flock. For behold, I will raise up and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north, and they shall array themselves against her and from there she will be captured. Their arrows shall be like those of an expert warrior, and none shall return in vain, and Chaldea shall become a plunder, and all who plunder her shall be satisfied. Thus saith Yah. Verse 18 of the same scripture says, Therefore thus saith Yahweh the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land, as I have punished the king of Assyria, but I will bring back Israel to his home, and he shall feed on Carmel and in Bashan. His soul shall be satisfied on the mountains of Ephraim and Gilead. In those days and at that time, says Yahweh, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought, but it shall not be found. Daniel 9, 24. This is how these scriptures line up. This scripture here ties to the 70 weeks of years. For I will pardon those whom I preserve. Continuing on. Jeremiah 51, 6 and 13. It reads, flee from the midst of Babylon and everyone save his life. Do not be cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of Yah's vengeance, and he shall recompense her. Babylon was a golden cup in Yah's hand. And the nations drank her wine, therefore the nations are deranged. Babylon has suddenly fallen and will be destroyed. Well for her. Well for her. We would have Wailed and healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go. You hear that? Let us go, everyone to his own country. For her judgments have reached to heaven and is yes. lifted up it unto the sky. This is the same scripture that John speaks about in the 18th chapter when it says, Come out of her, my people. For her sins have reached to heaven. Sodom and Gomorrah's sins had reached to heaven. What did the Creator do when Sodom and Gomorrah's sins reached to heaven? He rained down brimstone and he rained down fire on Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sins. As Yah had overthrown Sodom and Gomorrah, also he shall overthrow Babylon. That's how it's written. That's what it's coming about. So you have to leave her, as the scripture said. Verse 45 says, go out of her, out of her midst, my people, 
Jeremiah 51, 45. Everyone deliver himself from the fierce anger of Yah. Lest your heart faint and you fear the rumor that will be heard in the land. Look, there's a rumor coming. In one year, after that, another year, a rumor will come. And violence will be in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days are coming that I will bring judgment on the carved images of Babylon. Her whole land shall be ashamed, and all her slain shall fall in the midst. Then the heavens and the earth and all that is in them shall sing joyously over Babylon. For the plunderers shall come against her from the north, says Yahweh. And Babylon has caused the slain of Israel to fall. So at Babylon, the slain of all the earth shall fall. And you who have escaped the sword, get away from her. Do not stand still. Remember Yahweh afar off and let Jerusalem come to your mind. Not Chicago. Not Denver, not Houston, not Detroit, not Miami, not New York, not Montreal, not Toronto, not Kingston, not any place but Jerusalem. If I, you, we forget Jerusalem, then let our right hand, the land, the arm of execution forget us cunning. Why won't you speak of the joy of going home to Jerusalem? Then shut up and let your tongue cleave to the roof of your mouth because Hallelujah. Jerusalem is my chief joy, and there Hallelujah. God put his name forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn your attention towards Jerusalem. You're going to have to leave everything here. And if you're wise and you're worried about anything, you better get your family as well informed as possible and begin to sell off what you got because you ain't going to leave up out of here with no material things except the gold Hallelujah. and the silver and the fine raiment that's coming to us in the form of reparations, repatriation, Hallelujah. restoration, and return to resettle in the promised land. You're not going to get that stuff here so you can use that here and then you mess up again and build the golden calf. Not here, not this time. You're going to have to take that home and build for yourself an infrastructure, build for yourself your own home, build, build, because guess what? You will build when you get home, but your home is already being built for you. For the heathen himself is digging for you wells that you did not dig, and he's building for you houses that you have not yet lived in. The same thing that happened to us with Moses is about to happen to you. For the earth has broken forth, and the green grass and the fruit have bursted forth in the land of Arad, in Zion, and water is running down in the desert because Ezekiel said that the world and the land would know when you come in for it will break forth in abundance because my people are about to come home. Hallelujah. 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 Just a few more minutes so you all understand when you get ready to go home and you coming up out of here and the Gentiles are going to see it. And Zechariah puts it crystal clear in the 8th chapter. Zechariah 8.23, dealing with the last phases of the hem of this garment. Remember now what the garment represents. The fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. And you all who are the remnant in Israel, you are bound up. You are bound up in Ezekiel's hem of the garment. Ezekiel is a metaphor. He was called the son of man 89 times. Yahshua himself, Yahweh wasn't called son of man more than Ezekiel. That is a shadow of something to come. Zechariah 8.23 speaks on this wise. To you it says, and thus says Yahweh Shabbat in those days. Anytime you see in those days at that time, just you read. Out of Isaiah. Same thing. In those days at that time, you read out of Jeremiah. In those days at that time, it's talking about the latter days. In those days and at that time, ten men from every language of the nations 
shall grasp the hem of an Israelite man, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard Yah is with you. What did they grab? They grabbed the hem of the garment. They grabbed hold to the word. They grabbed hold to the law. And they grabbed hold to the remnant because you are bound up in that word. And you would be the example in the end time of Yah's goodness, mercy, and loving kindness. Not only does it say bind up the law and seal my testimony, or bind up the testimony rather, and seal the law among my what? Servants, my prophets. But the scripture says in Isaiah 8.20 to the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Mm -hmm. Glory, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. As we come now to the close, the hem of the garment. What is the hem of the garment? Isaiah 59 speaks of the hem of the garment of he who was to be sent and he who would come. As we head from Isaiah 59, Verse 17 through 21, into the Besorah. Isaiah 59, 17, or 16 through 21 says, And he, meaning Yah, saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his own arm brought salvation for him, and his own righteousness it sustained in him. For he put on the righteousness as a blessed plate, and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds and accordingly he will repay. Fury to his adversaries and recompense to his enemies. The coastlands and the islands will fully repay. Did you hear what that said? Fully repay. It have worked you from can't see morning to can't see night, not a day, a week, a year, but 400 years. Somebody has to repay for all the free slave labor that they got rich from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they shall be in fear. And they shall be in fear. Who are those that are in fear but those who are in the coastlands? That is a metaphor for islands. And don't you know that an island has two bodies of water on each side? And there's a body of water on the east called the Atlantic Ocean. And there's a body on the west called the Pacific Ocean. And the scripture says that they shall be in fear of the name of Yah from the west. I'm not making this up. It's written there in the book. And the glory of the rising of the sun when the enemy comes in like a flood. That's what, De what Nathaniel was talking about in Revelation 12. The flood of the Roman army. The flood of the American army. The flood of the police state is coming in like they did in the days when the invasion was going. Because flood is water. And waters are metaphorically people. When they come in like a flood, then Yah will lift up a stone. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and to those who shall turn ungodliness away from Yah and Jacob. This is my covenant with them, my spirit, Israel, which is upon you, and my words which I put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants, descendants from this time forth, thus says Yah. That is a permanent guarantee of the perpetuity that the word is in you. It is in not just your flesh. It is in your spirit. It is in your DNA. You are a covenant people. That is your calling. That is who you are. Hallelujah. It's a righteous garment you got to be wearing. I ain't talking about no evil. I ain't talking about harming nobody. We simply talking about getting out of here. I don't want nothing to do with this land. I don't want no part of it. I just simply want to go home. Don't you want to go home? Hallelujah. 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 The world of Gentiles trying to come and get in here, and those of us who are in our right mind are trying to get up out of here. As I told somebody else, don't be lured to sleep with the Trojan horse effect of bringing all those so-called immigrants in here because all of them ain't immigrants, if you understand what I'm saying. Because the judgment is about to be set. 
because it has now become the time for the saints of Yah to possess the kingdom. It is, we are so close. We are so close. Matthew 9, 20, Matthew 9, 20 and 22, as I wrap this up, as I wrap this up, 9 and 20 and 22. We're going to go through these scriptures. As we close, just a few more minutes. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your discipline. Tore Yah for your obedience to his word and your patience. Don't you know that the testing of your, your faith produces the patience? And you all have been acting out of love. This is an act and a walk of love for you to be wherever you are, whenever you came on for this length of time, because you love this word of the most high. In 920 of Matthew, it reads, and I quote, it says, <laughs> and suddenly a woman who had a flow or issuance of blood for 12 years came from behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. And Yahweh said, as he turned around, when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, but daughter, your faith has made you well. And from that point in time, that hour, the woman was made well. This is a story about the woman and the Messiah doing two of his many miracles. And one of these, he actually did not even perform, which is this one here. Because what I'd like for you to focus on is where she chose to touch him and what is mentioned here that he says back to her. Woman, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Your faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. You are walking not in the flesh because the flesh requires you to act out of action because of something you see and can lay your hands on, tangibly speaking. But your faith, which without it is impossible to please Yah, causes you to act on mere belief that he is a true word, one to his word, than man is. You don't trust in the flesh of man. The scripture calls that an accursed thing. Cursed is the man that trusts in man and makes flesh his arm. But Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in Yah with all your heart. Every bit, every ounce, every inertia, every bit of nanosecond breath you draw, you not to lean unto your own understanding. You shall acknowledge him oh and God. he will set you in right order and position to the path you're supposed to walk. Hallelujah. 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 It's him you trust. This is about trust when he says your faith has healed you. She believed that if she just touched the hem of his garment where the word was wrapped up inside the word. It was the word that freed her and set her free and made her healthy because she believed. She She believed. Do you believe? Because the book said without faith it's impossible to please him. Do you believe? Matthew 14, 36 do you believe? I believe. Hey, you, ever hey. you ever run out of gas? You ever had your lights cut off? Mm. You ever had a bad report come from the doctor? Mm. Hey. Huh? You ever had your wife cheat on you, husband cheat on you, best friend lie on you? Mm. And you were disappointed? Hey. Because your expectations in them were high. Learn the lesson and put all your expectations and your faith in a God that has never failed you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's never failed you. 36 verse of the same book of Matthew in the 14th chapter says, and I quote, it says, and those people who were around him, that recognized him, they sent out into in the surrounding region and brought to him everybody who was sick. 
and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. The Hebrew word that is here is rab. R-A-B, rab. Rab means minty, plentiful, in abundance. So not just the woman who had the issuance was healed, but everybody who had sickness, everybody who was blind, everybody who was deaf, everybody who was dumb, everybody who was lame, touched the hem of the Messiah's garment, and they were healed. Hallelujah. They were healed. Luke 8, 43rd verse through the 48th verse. I'm almost finished. Just a few more scriptures, beloved. It says, and I quote, in the 8th chapter of the book of Luke, it says in verse 43, it reads, Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her money, all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by anyone, she came from behind him and touched the border, the hem of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Yahshua said, Who touched me? Now this is powerful here. He didn't say who touched my garment. He said who touched me. Because the garment that is a fine linen represents the righteous acts of the saints. And you cannot differentiate your clothing of righteousness with your acts of righteousness. They got power together. She touched his clothes and was healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who touched me? Who touched me? He said. And when all of them denied it, and Peter and those who were with him says, Rabbi, the multitude strong past you, and you say, who touched me? And Yahweh Yeshua said, somebody touched me, for I perceive that power went out from me. Do you hear that? Oh, power Thank went you. out in the power of the healing. Yahweh Ropika, Yah is your healer. Yeshua was the word from the source of the power vested in him. He came down where God, Yah himself, humbled himself and dwelled among men to show humanity, I am that I am. Hallelujah. 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 Before Abraham was, I am. I am. And so he did that. Don't you know that it took a lot of, not power, it took a lot of love. That was love to come down and put on a imperfect human garment of flesh that wear no sin. He knew he came for you. Hallelujah. That's love. Love conquers everything. Yes, love. You are commanded in the very books of Deuteronomy, in the books of Leviticus, to love your neighbor as yourself. And what greater love does a man have for his people that he would lay down his life for his family, for his brethren? And that's what the master did. And the supreme being, his word came down and was cloaked. Do you hear what I'm saying? He cloaked himself with flesh out of love to defeat the adversary because of the very prophecy out of his own mouth that the seed of Eve would strike a death blow to the head of Satan and bring down sin and transgression on his people and that you would have access to the creator again in your fellowship and your worship because you ain't made a sacrifice in 2,000 years. Hallelujah. He made no animal sacrifice in 2,000 years. So what are these acts that we're talking about as I come to a close? Just two more scriptures and we are completed for today's lesson before the Most High. May Yah add clarity 
to the reading and the teaching of his word. Third chapter of the book of Colossians, verse 12 through verse 14, it reads on this wise, Therefore, as the elect of Yah, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Messiah forgave you, you must do also. Forgive each other. Forgive each other. If you've offended somebody, go and tell them, I'm sorry. If they offended you, you don't necessarily have to wait for them. Reach out to them and say, you know what? I want to bring my altar before the Creator, but I'm going to leave my altar here because it's, my offer here at the altar because the scripture says, go be ye reconciled to your brother and your sister. Because the next verse teaches us that above all things, put on love. Put on love. Cloak yourself with love, which is the bond of perfection. Four, fine and white and clean linen are the righteous acts of the saints. Galatians 5, 14 and 25. Galatians 5, 14 and 25. Galatians. In the fifth chapter, 5.14 and 25. 5.14 says, For all of the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 16 says, Say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So let's show you the Babylonian garment in the spiritual connotation of it. For the lust of the flesh wars against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to another. Why? Because they are spiritual fabric that don't mix together. One is wool, ha, 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 and the other one is what? Linen. Metaphorically, wool is rough. That's what the flesh represents. And linen is smooth and it's clean and it represents the spirit. And if you understand the comparison and how they're different one to another, if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the condemnation of the law. Why? Now, the flesh works are clear and evident. They are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, Sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts, wrath, self-ambitions, dissensions, and hearsays. Envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalries, and alike, of which I have told you before. You've been forewarned, just as I also told you in past time, that those who practice such things, those who practice the adultery, those who practice the idolatry, those who have on the Babylonian garment, the scripture says they shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah. Hallelujah. So if you've got a righteous garment, and those are the acts of the saints, then the fruit of the Spirit is love, Joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are messiahs have crucified the flesh. So the act of the flesh dying was to crucify that which resided in the flesh. And the things that was in the flesh are the works of corruption unto condemnation, which is adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery. All forms of these things, beloved, are sins that disconnect you from Yah and tarnish your garment. That which what makes it a Babylonian garment. Because those are acts that I just quoted. Those are sins that I just quoted. And those are tainted, Babylonian, made up 
acts that occur out of a people in captivity in Babylon, wherever they live, under mystery Babylon the great, the mother of harlots, and all the abominations of the earth. Come out of her, my people, and receive ye none of her plague, for her sins have reached to heaven. Come out of her and take off the Babylonian body of flesh and unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. And put on the garment which represents in these right acts the fruit of the Spirit. Know this and be this crystal clear. We just have a few more minutes and Torah Yah, blessed be upon him, we will be about it here. Verse 7 of the 6th chapter of the same letter of Galatians says, Do not be deceived, for Yah is not mocked, for whatsoever man or woman soweth, they shall also reap. For he who sows to the flesh of the flesh, you shall reap corruption. That is death. But he who sows to the Spirit will be of the Spirit. You shall reap everlasting life. Because the flesh profit nothing. It is the Spirit that giveth life. And the words that we've been teaching to you from the beginning up till now and the end are Spirit. Preach. Hallelujah. Your call. Hallelujah. So let us not grow weary while we doing good. Those are your righteous acts. What righteous acts? The fruits of the Spirit. There are nine of them. Learn them. Embrace them. Walk in them. Do them. And you will see a change in your life. The world has not changed because you who are in the world have not changed. If you want the world to change around you, then you change to reverse the curse. You got the power. You got the might. Walk in your righteous acts of Yah and watch things change. Hallelujah. That's my rule. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're being ineffective because you're trying to do it in the flesh and not in the spirit. You can't accomplish this in the flesh. The flesh is unto corruption. It is the spirit that gives it life. So while you're doing good, for in due season, you shall reap. If you do not lose what? You do not lose faith. As we close, we end in where we started. Revelation 19, 79. And why am I going there? Because, again, I keep saying to you, there's a wedding you got to go to. You got to make sure you get in the wedding with the right clothes. Matthew 22, 1 through 14, which we didn't get a chance to read for the sake of brevity and time tells you about the person who showed up not having the proper garment, didn't have the right clothing, had nothing to do with the outer exterior. He wasn't, she wasn't clothed in righteousness. You will not get to the wedding supper of the Lamb with a Babylonian garment on. Hallelujah. 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 Revelation 19.79 speaks on this wise as I close. Let us be glad and rejoice and give glory unto him. For the marriage supper of the Lamb has come and his wife. Who is his wife? None other than Israel. That Israel is the one that descends out of heaven from Yah, adorned like a bride, adorned for her husband. And she got in her clothing blue, purple, and scarlet. Read the scriptures. And in the hem of her garment, she's got bells and pomegranates. So you can hear her when she moved because she wearing a fine white garment which is the righteous acts of the saint he ain't married no whore from Babylon dressed up like a harlot a tart and a strumpet he wants a virgin pure clean and undefiled hallelujah hallelujah and she's made herself ready for what? The wedding supper. And to her, see that? There's the key. To her, this is Israel. To her, the bride. To her, the virgin. She's clean. She's unspotted. She's not defiled. She's unblemished. 
to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen clean and bright for the fine linen is the righteous acts the righteous acts of the Kassadim may Yah bless you may Yah keep you may Yah cause his face to shine upon you may Yahweh lift up his confidence upon you and give you eternal and everlasting peace Shabbat Shalom Hallelujah Yeah. 